Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, to everybody here on the dais, my colleagues and all the staff particularly who have done so much work, I thank you all. And to all the people here, the fans and others, uh, I think we all recognize that the Mariners are a very important asset to our community. And my proposal really is not an either or proposal. I do not offer this proposal to debate whether the Mariners are important to our community. I believe they are. I also do not believe this is a debate over the ownership. I think they're outstanding. And I want the Mariners to succeed and to have that World Series, hopefully before, not too far away. <laughs> um, not too far away. I and I also agree with my colleague, Councilmember Von Reichbauer, that um, baseball is being emotional and cerebral. I feel the same way. And I was very pleased and really thrilled when I took part in the legislature for the solution to have the stadium built. I was an integral part of that discussion and proudly voted for it in special session called by Governor Lowry. And I also, though, believe that this is not a mutually exclusive proposition that's before us. I believe, and I count myself here, that we can be supportive of the Mariners. We can be supportive of... Their, their success, we can be supportive, I believe, of taxpayers contributing to the stadium's maintenance needs. But I also believe that there has to be a line drawn somewhere, and that's what my proposal reflects. And you can look at the numbers here, and we'll go over those. But I think equally important is that we are talking about public facilities. It's been stated that as the public owns the stadium through the public facilities district, that we should contribute to the maintenance needs. And that was just said by my dear and beloved colleague, Councilmember Von Reichbauer. And that's totally in sync with what I believe, that we should contribute to the maintenance needs. But unfortunately, the proposal that is in the underlying motion that was transmitted by the county executive to us goes beyond the maintenance needs. And I have given, distributed to my colleagues a table here that shows at the bottom exactly what I am talking about. The identified needs by the Mariners uh, is for $184 million, roughly. $180 million, $179 through $189, whatever it would be. Uh, and that reflects upgrade improvements. And my thoughts are reflected in the bottom part of this chart that there is 184,000 in upgrade improvements. If we take the upgrade improvements away, uh, I'm sorry, $160 million of upgrade improvements, if we subtract that from the requested amount that's in the proposal, the underlying proposal, uh, of $160 million, we come up with $24 million in maintenance, basic maintenance needs. I think that's fair for the public to absorb. If, on the other hand, there are upgrades, I do not believe the public should be contributing the funds for those upgrades. And my proposal would put money into affordable housing and youth homelessness prevention instead of 50 percent of this entire proposal. Now, the key here is 
We're talking about a publicly owned facility, but it's very different than the publicly owned facility that we're all sitting in right now. There's no question that the public owns the King County Courthouse. Yet are we discussing upgrades to that, maintenance? There, there is that going on. But the real difference is we're talking about another publicly owned facility that is operated and supposedly maintained by a for-profit business that I love that for-profit business. But what don't we get? We do not get property taxes paid by the Mariners or by the PFD. None. That is calculated to be about 5.8 to $6 million a year that we do not get as property tax payers. And I think of my constituents and many here on the council itself who do pay property taxes and they've been going up and it's hard for many people to pay for them and many are forced to sell their homes and move farther out away because they cannot afford the property taxes here. So that's part of it. According to what the Mariners have proposed and have not yet signed the lease agreement containing is that they will not pay, the public will not get profit sharing. The public will not get anything as it stands now from selling the naming rights for the stadium, which will come up the first day of 2019 if a lease agreement is signed. And the public does not get from the Mariners fair market rent. Right now it's about $1.5 million a year going up to two million under the new lease agreement and will uh, we'll increase beyond that. But it's very, very low. We don't get that money, the public, for a publicly owned facility. I believe and I trust the Mariners ownership puts the money back into the stadium. I have no question about that. But my point is here, why should we be taking on more needs of the Mariners, particularly beyond the maintenance needs, the basic maintenance needs? Now, we could look at it and say, for those in the public who believe that the Mariners, the stadium, we should pay for all of these requested funds, $180 million approximately over the 25 years, then you'll be supportive of the underlying proposal or of Councilmember McDermott's and Balducci's amendment. If you believe that the Mariners' ownership, the PFD should get nothing, then you will be very unhappy with the $25, $26 million that I have in my amendment. If you think the public should contribute some, then you will like my amendment. Clearly for me, what we need is to find the right balance. And I don't think contributing $180 million when we have a fabulous stadium that, yes, needs maintenance, yes, needs repair, yes, needs upgrades uh, to make it competitive for being in the top 10 or top one-third of all stadiums in the country. But yet, if you look at some of the other teams around the country, I know the Dodgers, um, the Boston Red Sox, and there's another team, they own, they don't ask for any more money. Yet the Dodgers were awarded the All-Star Game coming up, I think, in 2020. It can be done. I maintain we do not need to put public money into this stadium, but we'll go along with the basic maintenance needs. This is fair, and um, I think that we should go ahead with my proposal. And the one last thing I want to say is I am very 
supportive of keeping funding in tourism. In fact, I think it's an insult to say that, as reflected in the other striking amendment, that we will put in $8 million for tourism promotion and the rest will go to the stadium. Stadium's important. Tourism is what the whole hotel motel tax is about, mainly paid for by tourists to our region. And I was absolutely opposed to the legislature's eliminating the state tourism office years ago. We're the, as far as I know, we're the only state in the country that does not have a tourism office. Tourism promotion is essential. We want people to come and stay at our hotels and motels. We want that tax revenue to be generated, which we can use here. The Mariners are definitely a big draw. But should we be sending so much money to a stadium and so little for tourism? That makes no sense to me. I find it insulting. And I think we should include funding, which my measure does, for the Showwear Center, for Visit Seattle, Dash King County, and for Seattle Southside. They need the funds. We want to promote tourism. I've gone on way too long, but I think my proposal makes sense, and I ask for your support. Thank you, Mr. Chair.